uh, first of all, thank you for doing this and uh, happy to happy to talk to you. Um, I, I think the first time I, I noticed you was in cold weather, actually. Oh, wow. Right on. Yeah. Which is, you know, it's one of those movies that I remember watching kind of like, I don't know what this is. I'll watch it. And you just find yourself really into it. And then you just start noticing all the sort of like unusual people in it and go, I'm interested. Like, what are they what, what are they up to next? It just sort of like starts. And and as I was looking back just to just to see him, like, oh, I've noticed that like several times over the years. It's <laughs> it's, a, it's a testament to, I think, your taste that a lot of the, you know, as you grow your stature roles are slightly off kilter and in movies that maybe are more interesting but maybe underseen in a way it's interesting because i imagine you know people coming up the same time as you are, are sometimes taking smaller roles and going nowhere or taking these bigger roles and going in different directions how do you how do you sort of figure out what's right for you i feel like um directors who think outside of the box have always been drawn to me whether it's aaron katz who made cold weather or Jeremiah Zagar, who did We the Animals, or you know, in, in this case, Elegance Bratton with the inspection. It's always it's always directors who think a little bit outside of the box. Um, I'm I, I've never been uh, a cookie cutter kind of actor, and and uh, I think it's been uh, it's been difficult it's been difficult at times for the industry to place me. Uh, but it really is like original thinkers usually who have been drawn to my work. Um, from from throughout you know throughout my career, so it's interesting that you bring up cold weather because I was like, you know that that I you know I'm I'm really proud of that film and and uh, that and that collaboration with Aaron and, and that cast and um, I love that also. It's interesting because Aaron Katz, who directed Cold Weather, also was in in the habit of casting non actors, as yeah. did Jeremiah Zagar, who did with the animals like. Uh, the, 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 all the children with the animals are, you know, were not previously actors, and and uh, yeah, I, yeah. I think it like it's oftentimes more about them finding me than me finding them. Totally. I mean, you also show up at Hustle, so like there's a. Uh, I think this this last year, I think if people haven't noticed you, they're not paying attention. Between Hustle, yeah. Inspection, the same storm, totally. um, you know, which is which is always the fun thing of like you never plan it that way, but it's just oh wait. It looks like I really worked a lot this year. Like, you know, it's <laughs> good. Tell the agents. But it, it it does, like you said, original thinkers. And I think just playing roles maybe slightly different than I think someone else might play them to to its benefit. I really, I really think with the inspection, there's that because there's a I would say for all four of the main characters, and there's about four main characters, mm -hmm. um, they all could be played in a way that you go, all right, I've seen this movie. And like it's fine. But like I I know this movie, and I think that's I think a lot of the vibe going into the movie, you know, whether I, I saw it at Toronto, but whether you saw it at Toronto, New York, just at a screening, yeah. there's a little bit of like, well, why is everyone like this? Because it seems like it could be almost like a TV movie. I'm like, good, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. You're watching you go, everyone involved is playing a different character than you expect them to be playing while still making it the right character for this movie. And it's a awesome. real um, interesting like line that you walk in it. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's a testament to to the writing, uh, to Elegance's uh, view of the world. I think like none of these characters, I mean, even on paper, th these characters weren't your typical, uh, I think a lot of that nuance is already in the script. And then, you know, Bokeem Woodbine, Jeremy Polk, A Real Union, these are all like, you know, actors who have been doing it, you know, and, and, and are in deep into their careers uh, to varying degrees. Yeah. Um, but Elegance gave us a great opportunity with, with these characters and, and the ensemble at large, you know, like, uh, um, uh, yeah, I think a lot of it's in the writing. Oh, yeah. I mean, they all, especially the writing, I think, lets them go to directions you wouldn't expect, whether it's exactly. uh, Gabriel Union, you know, not necessarily having the redemption arc, you would think. But there is that moment, you know, Bokeem having having that moment of, well, we did the thing. So, like, now I'm a different person. And, like, yeah. that's... It's very, I think it's very hard to make that not feel like a writer's trick, but it never right. feels like it there. And I think the the most interesting character with that is yours, just because it, it even more so, I think than than Jeremy, the outward appearance of your character has to be different than than who the person is, mm -hmm. and really only us as the audience and Jeremy get to see, you know, the 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 true person. You you mostly just get the you know I'm a I'm a drill sergeant. Maybe I'm not the hard ass of the group, like. 
I'm right. the one you want to get if you have to get one of us, but yeah. Yeah. I'm still here to do a job. It's it's just, it's interesting. Like, even like in scenes with you and Bokeem, like you don't, there's like, there's still this line being walked of like, you know, we have a different relationship, but I'm still putting a little bit of a show on because I know that you're also putting a show on. Right, 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 right. And at the end of the day, I'm the subordinate, you know, in that, exactly. in that dynamic. Uh, you know, you have these, uh, so there's like a, a hierarchy. There's the uh, the senior drill instructor who's uh, laws played by Bokeem. Yeah. Uh, there's the, uh, what's known as the kill hat. Uh, that's Nick Logan, who's kind of like, he's sort of, you know, instilling the fear of God into these recruits and like barking orders at them and really being the bulldog in terms of like disciplining them. And then you have the drill hat, which is Rosales, my character, who's Who's more of an instructor, more of a nurturing kind of character, and uh, I think in in French, in Jeremy Pope's character, he sees great potential, and um, he also sees an underdog that he that he can kind of build up. Uh, and I love story. I love. Sto I personally love stories about underdogs. Uh, you know, yeah. like you know, they're, they're, I think this this movie shares a kinship with um, with Rocky. You know, the, the person who kind of uh, faces all odds to like to achieve something, and and um, uh, I, I I was really drawn in that to that element of the story as a reader, and uh, certainly I think I love the way that that Rosales um, nurtures uh, French, uh, and, I, and I just think that that is a really interesting uh, uh, depiction of masculinity uh, uh, that we don't often see. And I think that's you know to your point. I think that that, that that's. Um, uh, it, it could have gone in this other direction, and, and, it, and it didn't. Like elegance gave us this great, like nuanced uh, storyline. I think you're right with the Rocky thing, also, because it is about like doing the thing. It's not about being the best. It's about just doing it. Like if I right. pass, I don't care if I come in last. I pass. Yeah, yeah. And, absolutely. And there's something to that. And and it was funny when I was when I was talking to elegance. I I told him I was so I was in the police academy for three days at one point. <laughs> didn't work out. Wasn't for me. But you watch it and you're like, well, I I had a very different experience. I'm a straight white man. Like I'm this is not my story. But there's little hints of things where I'm just like, that I remember that guy. Mm. That guy. Like, you know, the, even mm. even there, like I, I got the guy who who loved to yell at you. You know, there was the other guy who was a different instructor who would have been closer to your character. He's like, well, if I would add him, I might have been able to like <laughs> get yelled at for like not buttoning your jacket the right way. Just things where I'm just like, I'm an adult, stop yelling at me. This is not gonna work out. But you know, you can't can't say that. But it's so just funny. funny that like it speaks to I think how how well the movie works that you can take a completely different experience that only in very broad strokes you can you can compare it to and go, I see something there. And like it's not about taking someone's story and making it mine, but it's about seeing the universality of of we Absolutely. all have like you said, underdog story. Like everyone has a story where they're like, I hate it here, but I'm gonna you know what? I'm gonna do it because fuck you. That's why. Like that's, yeah. that's why I'm gonna do it. And it's gonna mean something to me. And I imagine also for actors, you really feel that also because you know everyone knows it, but no one thinks about it. Like for every yes, there's a million no's. I mean, even even the the top tier fame, you know, like there are people who are still getting told no who are raking in the millions. Like yeah. you yeah. still get told no more than you get told yes. So like landing anything is still this point of pride. Yeah, especially yeah. in a movie like this, you can also challenge, you know, channel that and go, you know, I. I know this character because in a very different way, I'm living this character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, um, it's funny because I was, uh, I, I've been talking a lot about The Outsiders lately. Uh, um, it was a film that I kind of grew up on and, and, and was really instrumental in my in my journey as an artist. And and I was, I went on IMDb Pro and, you, you know, there's all the, like the, all the, um, the, 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 you know, the, all the, all the, the, the trivia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was reading all the people who auditioned for that film. And then even in the, in, even in that incredible ensemble, like, you know, Tom Cruise and Emilio Estevez and like the audition for like, you know, maybe like one of the leads and, you, yeah. know, you know, so it, it is like one of those, it, it, it is one of those industries where, you know, you definitely have to get accustomed to rejection. And, and, uh, but I love that you found that universality in, in, in the story. Cause I, I definitely feel, I felt the same. I mean, when I read the script, it was, I connected with it even before, like, I was thinking about my character. I, I connected with French's story and, and sort of because that like that's incredibly universal. This like someone seeking the love and affection of their and approval of, of their mother. Um, I, I think that's that's incredibly universal. Well, that's that's also I think you know beyond anything else, you just have to like what you do. So if you're yeah. if you read it, I'm sure you've had this before where you read something. Else. Oh, I don't I don't love this. But you know, there's other reasons to maybe be interested in it. But you're going like. 
this could be a, I don't know, like this is six months of my, like, you know, you start to like yeah. have that conversation with yourself. And I think it's a lot easier to have the conversation of, I love this. Like, I don't, I, yeah. don't, I don't really care how much it, I don't care how long, like this is yeah. going to be a pain in the, I want this. Like that's, that's Absolutely. a better conversation. Absolutely. I, I think with each script that I read, I'm always, you're looking for your way into the story, like your own personal, what can I connect with? And, 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 and every time I read a script, I want it to be the best script I've read. You know, I want it to be, and, and, but I'm also paying attention to, you know, things that, that, you know, I, I knew when I read the inspection that this was a writer and a director that understood nuance and understood like, it was not a story that was told in primary colors. It was like all about the details and, and all about the, the, the sort of the nuances of, of the, the human condition. And, and uh, I'm always, every time I read a script, I, I, I'm looking for a way to connect. And with this one, it was just like, it was undeniable. It was just like, as soon as I read it, I was like, I want to be a part of this. Yeah. Also, if you don't connect then, it, it's it's just harder for, how's the audience gonna connect? Like if the, if the base, yeah, if it's not, it's like, you know, listen, maybe written a play or two in your time. Like if you're sitting there and writing it and going like, I don't, I don't know, whatever, like maybe it'll work. Like, how do you expect someone to go sit down and watch it and be like, yeah, I, I'm in, I love it. Like if Absolutely. you like it, the, the things that work start with everybody's involved, like obviously things can happen, but when everyone loves something, everyone supports, everyone nurtures it, things can go wrong, but you're starting from this place of success. And That's I remember, right. you know, reading the inspection, you go, I, I think there's a voice here. Like there's a story that's compelling. Like this isn't like, exclusionary in any way like yeah, yeah. you don't have to identify like it, it's very much a universal like you know 30 years ago this would have been a mainstream movie you know it's totally, not totally. doing anything particularly out there but it has a point of view yeah and we're we're off to the races like we only we can screw this up like that, that's a good feeling <laughs> no that's well that's entirely well said i mean like that's and i think that because the story was so deeply personal to elegance yeah. uh, because it came from his own experience and and there was, I felt like he was, he had everything writing on, on, on okay. a film and he was so vulnerable and just such an open heart that it, I think it, it created a sense among the ensemble that we had a great responsibility to tell the story. We, we all wanted elegance to win. We wanted this story to be the best that it could be because we all, we, we felt that responsibility uh, because, it, because it was so personal to him and okay. because he was so vulnerable. And that was such a great gift to us as actors. Oh, yeah. He was he was saying it was very strange for him, like you know, when he had you guys sort of doing the the, the boot camp, like learning how to do it. I think he said it was his actual instructor who like yelled at him once who was doing it. And like when she first was like, "Good morning," like he like did that, like no, I don't have to do that anymore. Like, <laughs> that's right. Like something inside him was like, "Oh shit, she's yelling again." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, like that's it's a light moment, but also it speaks to like, yeah, this is real. Like I'm I'm taking like real and making art. And hopefully someone can get any semblance of that feeling. And that's, Absolutely. that's what Absolutely. we, that's what you guys look for. I imagine yeah. also like you're getting, you know, the longer you do this, the, the, you know, the more scripts, the better scripts, the different scripts that come in, you get to, you know, at a certain point start saying no, which is a, it's a, it's a weird luxury as an actor, you know, like there's Absolutely. a time where you're like, what is it? I'll, I'll do it. But what is it? Like, that's the yeah. first it's yes. Then tell yeah. me what it is. But now you can be like, I'm interested, but like, let me, let me, let me read it. And let me see what the deal, let me maybe to want to talk to director. Like there's a, there's a power in being like, I know that I have a value that is reflected now, as opposed to like, please value me. That's right. That's, that's, that's entirely true. I mean, you know, when I started, because I started in theater, I, I, I really, uh, I, I fell in love with playwrights. Like the, 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 yeah. the play is the play is the thing. And if you're like, it's, you know, what we do is a collaborative medium and, and, there's so many egos and so many personalities in, in this industry, but when we can all come to the table and put our egos aside and uh, work toward a common goal, whether it's the play or in the case of, of filmmaking, it's the director, it's the director's medium. And, and, and to me now, as I progress in my career, it's like, I really, I want to work with visionaries. Uh, I want to work with sure. directors who have a real, uh, who want to say something about the human condition. And, and I think elegance, I mean, was working on that level and, and in every sense of you know, in every sense of it. So, um, I, and I, and to be at the advent of his career is really really exciting. I mean, you know, like for him moving into narrative spaces, I just can't wait to see what he does next because this is such a such a exciting start to things. Totally. Uh, and and an excellent point to leave this on since it's a dog's medium in my world and he wants to. <laughs> but you should be you should be incredibly proud of this. It's it's a real the thing was for me 
it was so much more entertaining than I was expecting because you're worried it's going to be like medicine and, and that can still be a good movie. But the fact that it's got a, a sense of humor about it yeah. has, has enough removed to be like, yeah, it's a little ridiculous, like to, to be in this situation, which is how you cope with, with trauma and stress, like a healthy person. Can Absolutely. Laugh. It's funny because I was just in Austin at the Austin Film Festival this last weekend uh, with the film and, and my brother came out to see it and uh it, you know, there was a party afterwards. So I, could, I couldn't really, we didn't really get to connect after the, the screening. So I called him the day after when I got home to New York and I called him and I was like, what did you think of the film? I just wanted to hear his thoughts because yeah. he's not, you know, he's uh, he's a creative person. He's a musician, but he's not a, he's not a filmmaker or storyteller. So I'm always curious about his thoughts on things because I really re respect his opinion about stuff. Uh, um, and uh, he said that, you know, he said, I'm not really into dramas and you know this, he said, but there was humor and levity to the story that really drew me in. And to your point, like I was like, "Oh, that's that's awesome!" I loved hearing that. Like, um, like uh, that that he was kind of drawn in through the humor. Uh, yeah. and I think that's that's part of uh, uh, elegance's genius for sure. Totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well, thank you so much uh, for doing this. I, I look forward to to what comes next because I think obviously you're starting to amass these filmmakers that you want to continue working with. But I think, to you said, you want to work with visionaries. I think you're starting to get on their radar as well. So it's, I yeah. think it's going to be pretty exciting times. Thank you, Joey. Appreciate that. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Great talking to you. Likewise.